Much music. We're here with Sum 41's Derek Wibley. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Get to talk to a Canadian iconic legend right now, so I'm super excited. But to get ourselves a little bit warmed up for this interview, I thought we could maybe do some quick mental math. And I thought I'd ask you if you could give me three sums of 41 off the top of your head. No, I, I, I don't. I barely graduated high school. I don't do math. <laughs> Love it. I, I honestly, I couldn't do it right now either. So, I mean, you were around also during the early days of Much. Uh, can I ask what some of your fondest memories were of Much Music? Well, obviously, I mean, I remember growing up watching Much Music. Um, that was the biggest thing. Uh, I was, you know, kind of glued to it as a kid. Um, so when we started being played on Much Music as a late teen or like probably maybe when I was 19 or 20, um, it was such a huge moment for us. And then going down and doing those live performances and having all the people out on the street and, and you know, I'd watched those things for years and then actually getting to do it and seeing people out on the street for our performance was, you know, it was mind blowing at the time. It's crazy. Love that, I know. Times have changed, we're on social now, we've reinvented ourselves. So we're happy to talk to you also with your uh, new album that you guys just dropped, Heaven and Hell, March 29th, it came out. So there's two sides to this. We got like a pop punk side on Heaven and uh, the metal headbangers on Hell. So how was the picking process like? Was it difficult to kind of choose the 10 perfect songs to embody each side? No, not really, because it was the only songs that existed. No, the whole record was an accident. I, I was just writing music during the pandemic, not thinking it was gonna be for anything. And right. once there was a, about 17 or 18 songs, I went out in my car and I just drove around listening to everything, trying to make sense of what I'd been working on for the past couple of years. And then once I listened to it all in a row, it kind of hit me and I thought, could this actually work as a double record? Because I have this sort of these, them, say, you know, similar amount of songs for each kind of style. Right. Uh, and then I sent it to the rest of the guys in the band and I just said, what do you guys think? Uh, here's the songs I've been working on. And I didn't give them any ideas. I just said, you know, give me your thoughts. Yeah. And each one of them, each one of them called me or texted and emailed and just said, what do you think about making a double album? So once I realized we all had the same idea, uh, then it, you know, I always let the music tell us what to do. That's always the most important thing, I think. I love that. And I mean, speaking of that, I love the idea that you decided to bring back like a double album. Uh, you know, back in the day, looking at cassettes, what was your favorite kind of like side A, side B album? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I always had dubbed cassettes. I never, I was always like the rich kids had actual <laughs> real copies of albums. Um, so I had dubbed tapes of stuff. Um, but I don't know. I remember having Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. I remember having ACDC uh, tapes, you know, just all sorts of stuff. But um, I don't know if I have a favorite, really. Love that. No, Guns N' Roses is perfect. Um, and how special is it just having this final album release and tour? It also falls closely in line with your 10 year mark of sobriety this month. How is that all kind of coming together? Well, it's just, it sort of like accidentally comes together, but yeah. it all feels really, it feels great because it's one great year. Yes. Um, of all these sort of accomplishments and achievements. And uh, it's been a really great year. I mean, my life is a great life. So it's kind of like, um, you know, it's just another, Thing that's cool yeah. um i'm always it feels like life has never done surprising me with how cool it can actually get like whenever i think things are great it seems to just kind of get better i love that just keep asking yourself could this get any cooler and then it just and then it, and then it somehow <laughs> does um and what's your most memorable moment as a band after all of these years i think where we're at right now um is the best part about everything when i look back and i look at our whole career of almost 30 years and see all the ups and extreme lows and everything that we've been through, the whole heaven and hell of our entire career, I can look back and say, we made it through so much and never broke up, never quit and always pushed through whenever things were hard and we kept it together oh, and are God. going out on our, our own terms and writing our own story. And I think that's my favorite part about being in this band. 
full circle moment, I, it feels like. Kind of looking back on, you know, the 90s, what are some trends that you think are kind of popping back up today that you like? Maybe things that you miss? I don't know if I really missed anything. Um, I don't know. I think it's funny to me when I see everybody wearing really, really baggy clothes. Um, yeah. I remember doing that too, going to high school um, in super, super baggy pants um, and shirts that were like three times too big. Um, I don't really feel like I would go back to that. And how does it feel kind of wrapping up the final world tour, tour of the setting sum in Toronto, Canada, obviously hometown for you guys, you're in Canada. Yeah, I mean, well, there's definitely, there was definitely no other place it was going to be. It had to be Toronto. It's great, but it's also, it's the final yeah. one. It's the last, it. the last shows. Yeah, so I don't know how I'm going to feel until we get there and we're still almost a year away, but um, I don't know, this whole year is going to be great because I look at this tour as not, we're breaking up. This is just a really, it's yeah. a celebration tour. This, this joy that we have for playing music with each other. We still have that joy. We still love being on stage. We still love these songs and we still love each other. So we want to do that one more time and, and have everybody you know be involved with it. I love that I love that you mentioned it's a celebration because that's exactly what I was gonna say it feels more like a celebration because like you said you guys have stuck together all these years so now it's kind of just celebrating all of these ups and downs heaven and hell that you guys have all yeah. gone through so I love that yeah exactly. and just touching on some you guys are Canadian icons who are some of your favorite Canadian icons uh Neil Young yeah um classic yeah. I mean, I know there's there's a lot. I mean, and it, it, it's not just music. I mean, Jim Carrey, Mike Myers. Yes. Um, I mean, there's so many. Uh, it's hard to think of like on the spot, <laughs> but you know, those are a few great ones. Okay. We like to ask uh, some people that we interview who the most famous person on their phone is. Would you be able to tell us who the most famous person on your phone is? I have no idea. <laughs> um, but I will, I'll say one person because they, I was just about to say them as, a, as another great Canadian person and who is okay. on my phone, Kiefer Sutherland. Okay. I like that you tied the two together. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Love that. And what are you listening to these days? What kind of music are you bumping? It's probably like, there's nothing new that I'm going to turn anybody on to. It's like Aerosmith, the Rolling Stones, <laughs> you know, stuff so, like that. Awesome. Bob Dylan. <laughs> are you on TikTok these days? Instagram? I've never videos? been. No, I've I've never been on TikTok. No, um, I do have an Instagram. I'm not very good with it, but I am getting better. I'm starting okay. to post a little bit more. Because I see your account, you are active on Instagram. You guys have. I'm famous... active. Yep. But I'm not I'm not as active as a lot of people are. You guys have a famous song called Into Deep. I was gonna ask if there's any internet trend that you've kind of gone into deep on, like down a rabbit hole or something like that. Never once. Never once. I like that. You stay off. You stay off the socials. <laughs> The title of the last track on the album is How the End Begins. So I just wanted to ask, ending off this chapter, how does the next chapter begin? How does this end now begin for you guys? I don't know what I'm going to do next or what happens next. Because to me, I'm always so focused on what I'm doing. And we, since we just put out a record, Heaven and Hell, two weeks ago, and we just, you know, we're starting up a whole world tour. That's really what right. my focus is on right now. And I want to stay focused on making this the best Sum 41 tour we've ever done. I think once I'm faced with, I don't know what to do now, is when I'll start to figure out what I need to do. Yeah, I love it. Just soak in the moment, take it one step at a time. I like that. Um, yeah. Derek, thank you so much for joining us. Congrats on everything. The tour, the album, the 10 year mark of sobriety. Just great things coming for you this year. So congrats on everything and thank you for joining us at much. Cool, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Much love, guys.